what's going on everyone today dude another special video first of all happy thanksgiving all right i don't know if you guys celebrate it or not and i don't know what country you're from personally but if you guys celebrate it happy thanksgiving to you i love every one of you guys i say it at the end of the video i'm gonna say it now make sure you guys go out cook a turkey if you're a vegetarian cook a bit vegetarian turkey and make sure it's all good all right make some cookies for your mom or dad or your grandma whoever who's ever still alive in your family make some dessert for them all right but right now, I hope the next couple minutes, I can make your day a little bit better with this video. Right now, we're going to take a look at the iPod Touch 5th generation, all right? Now, what's interesting about this iPod is that this phone has the same chipset as the iPhone 4S, which is interesting because from the iPhone 4S to the iPod Touch, there was actually a little bit difference in the screen size, which is kind of interesting because the iPhone 4S had a 3.5 inch screen. This one had a four inch screen. That's a little like side note, completely off kind of track what I was trying to get at. So they both had the Apple A5 chip. Another device that had the Apple A5 chip is the iPad mini first generation. And I recently just bought that. I'm probably going to drop a video of that either this year or like next month in 2019. So I'm actually pretty interested of like how fast that tablet is compared to this iPod. Because if these iPods and iPads are kind of similar at all in terms of performance, then there's a huge problem. <laughs> and that kind of goes without saying how this video is going to go. But looking around, obviously my iPod touch has a cracked screen. All right, don't shoot me. I'm just like trying to get these videos out to you. And this was like the best deal I could get. So I'm like, I could have spent more, but these iPod touches are like not cheap anymore, which is surprising. Older ones are, but these ones, this one's still old too. This thing came out in 2012. There's like six years ago. There's no reason it should be as expensive as it is still. But even though this is six years old, there's only one more newer iPod touch since then, which is the sixth gen. And I just dropped a video on that like a week ago. If you want to see it linked in the description, but again, looking around the body, it's pretty familiar design. We have a home button on the front. We have pretty much stainless steel built, which is pretty nice. Lightning port and headphone jack on the bottom and speaker grill on the bottom as well. Power button up top, and this actually feels like a pretty premium device. The screen feels a little cheap, no doubt, but it doesn't feel that bad. I feel like I can bend it with one hand though. Now the weirdest thing they ever did, going from the iPad fourth generation to the iPod fifth generation, you actually lose the camera on the back, which is the dumbest thing ever. How would you, like imagine if a company right now in 2018 went, they dropped a phone, and then the year after they just dropped a phone without a camera on the back like it's the dumbest thing ever the ipod fourth generation had a front camera and a back camera but then when they upgraded to the ipod touch fifth generation they took out the camera which makes absolutely no sense they should have never did that i mean this was in 2012 so i guess not a lot of people were going to complain and to some people that might be like a pro if you're like a parent and you want to give your kid a phone or like an ipod or something like that at least this way they you won't be worried about them like taking photos of themselves or something like that but they would still be able to take photos of themselves with the front camera so i don't know what they were going for they eventually did add it back in with the sixth gen so there's that now i'll tell you like this okay this iPod isn't really that bad in terms of the way it looks and everything like that. The weirdest thing about it would definitely be the specs that it has. So it had the Apple A5 chip, like I said, it has a dual core CPU and it has half a gig of RAM. Okay. So it has 512 megabytes, whatever it is. And that's pretty bad for an iPod, especially in 2012. I believe the iPhone 5 came out that same year and that had one gig of RAM. So there's a pretty big difference there. And, and that kind of shows with the performance of this iPod. Now I'm going to keep calling the iPod a phone. I did that in the sixth gen video, but when I was kind of using it a little bit, I was opening apps, closing apps, things like that. It really isn't that good. And the latest version of iOS it got was iOS 9.3.5. So I was expecting it to be, you know, a little bit faster because it doesn't even have the latest version of OS. I'll tell you like this, iOS 9.3.5 is a pretty decent software. I thought it was pretty good on the iPhone 5, the 5S I had it on too. And on this iPod, I think it's just the specs that it has. It just isn't that good. And if you remember with the iPhone 4S, that also got iOS 9.3.5. And this almost has the same specs as that. And that didn't do so well either. And a lot of people complain about it. And it's the same thing with this. Now the iPod 5 really isn't super popular anymore so like not a lot of people talk about it but more people talk about the iphone 4s so that's why it's like it's like the same thing that happened with the 4s happened with this fifth gen ipod so in terms of performance pretty bad i don't really like it at all it's like lags so much i was not expecting it to be this laggy i was expecting it to be you know pretty decently performance heavy and things like that but no nah, it's, it's it's pretty bad opening apps, closing apps, multitasking is all just all around not that good, which is surprising. I, I thought this iPod would be pretty similar to the iPod 6 gen. I found performance also to not be the best, but it was pretty decent for what it is in the age. This one just, it's just not that good. And that kind of goes the same thing with gaming. So games like Temple Run run perfectly fine. I, I honestly believe that Temple Run works perfectly fine on every single device ever. I think I even got it on my like 3G or 3GS, my iPhone 3G, 3GS also works fine. <laughs> 
In this case, it, it works fine. It's not gonna you're not gonna run any problems. But with a game like Fruit Ninja, which isn't even that performance heavy, it's like such a basic game. Even this game has problems. Like it skip frames all over the place, which is surprising because I wasn't expecting it to be that slow or things like that. Because first of all, it's on iOS 9.3.5. I kind of get that the games are only made for like the heavier iPhones and like I guess heavier iPods like the 6th gen, but but I don't really get why this thing is so slow. Like I understand why it's so slow, but it's just so poorly spec that a game like Fruit Ninja doesn't even work that well. And then kind of I repped it up and I played Real Racing 3. That also didn't perform that well. I was more surprised with the Fruit Ninja aspect of it just because it was so slow on the, such a basic game. Real Racing 3 is heavier and I would say that it's playable. Every game I will play on it is playable. It just isn't that good, so that was kind of surprising to me. I wasn't expecting it to be that slow, but it is what it is. You can't really change the performance of this thing. I would be kind of curious though, if you had this iPod on like iOS 8, would the performance be different? Because iOS 8 was made for like much slower phones. So I'm kind of curious on what that case would be. Now kind of moving on, this phone does not have a back camera to test, but I tested the front camera and it's, I guess it's not that bad. I mean, it's like pretty basic. It is a 1.2 megapixel sensor, which is pretty interesting. For some reason, the specs that I'm reading off say that it does have a back camera, but they're completely wrong. It only has a front camera. It's 1.2 megapixels, like I said. It's basic. I guess it's something like an iPhone 5 camera, front camera or something. Like it's not like the greatest thing ever. It's not even going to be okay. It's going to be basic. It's going, to, I just still don't understand why they did it like this. You're able to take photos. You're able to take a square photo. You're able to take a video and you're able to take a time lapse all with the front camera. So I guess it's good. It, I guess it gets the job done. But if you have any of the basic needs, you won't be able to do it with this iPod because it does not have a back camera. Again, poor design choice from Apple, but it is what it is. Now, one interesting thing to note is that the battery life for this thing also is Maso Menos. It's not great. It's like in the middle. It has a 1,030 milliamp hour battery, and this actually almost has the same size battery as the iPod Touch 6th generation. I believe they're almost the same. I don't even remember. They might be exactly the same. Who knows? And I found that that battery life was okay, and I find that this battery life is also okay. It's like not amazing, which is weird because its specs aren't even that you know, high, so I figured it would kind of last a long time. And it kind of does, but it also doesn't because over time batteries do deteriorate. So in this case, the battery has gotten down. It's not like the full 1,030 milliamp hours anymore. It's more like 800, 600 probably, depending on how much this phone was used, how the charge cycle went, all those things. So I'll definitely say that in terms of battery life, this thing is pretty much in the middle. Don't expect too much, but don't expect too little either. But I don't really think many people are looking to buy an iPod Touch fifth generation anymore. I mean, in a market where we have so many phones and so many everything, why would somebody go out and purposely buy an iPod? And the only way I could think, the only scenario I would envision that somebody would go out and still try to buy an iPod either through a store or through eBay or something is to give to their kid or th some child or something like that. And in that case, it still kind of doesn't make sense because if I was a parent, right, and if I had a kid, he was like six years old or something, instead of going out and spending like $100 on an iPod or whatever, 200 even $50 on an iPod, I most likely have like an old phone laying around. So why would I not just give my child an older phone, you know, like that I have laying around that I could just like turn off the apps, maybe turn on parent mode if it has it and just give it to my kid. I mean, like, what's he going to do? Is he going to go and like do something on an iPhone that you can't do on an iPod? Just take out the SIM card. He can't make calls. He can't, he can still text, but you can still do iMessages through an iPod. So I can't really think of a reason why somebody would go and purposely go out and buy an iPod Touch when you have an iPhone, you have other phones laying around and our iPhones and our Androids can do way more than an iPod can. So it still doesn't really make much sense to me. I feel like this is just kind of pushing it. I feel like iPods had a time and place, but they really, there's just like no sense of keeping it now. I mean, if you have an iPod Touch, I mean, keep it. Even the fifth gen, I guess it's okay. But one, it's outdated. Two, the specs are completely weird. Three, it doesn't have any more software updates. And the software updates that it does have are like two or three years old at this point. So it just doesn't really make much sense to me to recommend somebody getting an iPod Touch. If you want to buy it, I guess, okay, do it. I mean, the build quality is really the only thing it has going for it now. But it's slow. It doesn't really perform that well. It doesn't have a back camera. The only thing that I really like about it actually is the power button and the volume buttons. They're black and I always like that. I just talked about the iPad yesterday and how that had a stainless steel with black power buttons and volume buttons. So, and overall, I kind of like that design aspect, but everything else, I mean, there's really no point in getting this. And that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it at. I want to know what you guys think though. Do you guys think the iPod Touch fifth generation is still worth it? Do you think it's going places? Do you not think? I mean, do you think it's worth even $50? Let me know in the comment section below. I'll be reading your comments, but 
hit that like button if you guys enjoyed the video, but definitely hit that subscribe button. Every single subscriber we get really does count. So it'll mean so much if you guys could hit that. I'm not even joking. Every time I wake up and I see you guys hit that subscribe button, it just makes me like tingle inside. So if you guys could hit that, I would literally be so happy. Also check out the links in the description as well. My Twitter, my Instagram, my second channel, everything is linked down below. I would really appreciate if you guys could go check that out. I do a lot of like iOS comparisons, iPhone comparisons, sometimes iPhone versus the Android, stuff like that. I would really appreciate if you guys could check that channel out. But more importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.